Hello and welcome to a session of triangles. Let's understand what a triangle is and what all things are there in a triangle. So let's take an example in this figure. Now ABC is a triangle. Now A as a point is known as a vertex. Similarly B is a vertex. C is also a vertex. Side AB is called a side. Similarly BC and CA. Now there are angles. Now the angle between AB and BC is angle B. Similarly, there is angle A and angle C. So, there is a vertex, there is a side and there is an angle. Let us see what all different properties are there. Now, if suppose it has two sides which are equal, suppose AB and BC are equal, then the triangle is called isosceles triangle. It can be for any two sides. If none of the sides are equal, then it is called a scalene triangle. If all the three sides are equal, say AB, BC and CA, then it becomes an equilateral triangle. Now the property of equilateral triangle is if the, all the sides are equal, then the angles also become equal. So a triangle which has a total of how much degrees? 180 degrees. So each, each angle becomes what? 180 divided by 3 which is 60 degrees. Let us look at other things. A triangle whose all the angles are acute, acute as in less than 90 degrees. It is called an acute angle triangle. If one of the sides or one of the angles is more than 90 degrees, then it is called an obtuse angle triangle. Since the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, two angles cannot be more than 90 degrees. Then the sum of these two angles will be more than 180 degrees. So the third angle will go where? Hence in an obtuse angle triangle, only one angle can be more than 90 degrees. Let us look at the third type of triangle, a 90 degree. So if one of the angles is 90 degrees, then it is called a right angle triangle. Now, in a right angle triangle, the side opposite to the 90 degree is called the hypotenuse. Now let us look at another thing. In a triangle, what is an external angle? Now if say ABC is a triangle and angle at angle C or at the vertex C, we have an extended line. Now on that extended line, the other angle which is formed is called an external angle. Let us look at the other properties of a triangle. What is the area of a triangle? Now the area of a triangle is nothing but half into the height into the base. Now here every side can act as a base. So let us say the one which is on the bottom is a base. So what is the height? Now a perpendicular distance between the other third vertex and the side that we are talking about is called the height. So half into the height into the base is called the area of a triangle. Let us take an example of equilateral triangle. Now in an equilateral triangle all the sides are equal. So let us assume the side to be A. So what is the area of an equilateral triangle? It is nothing but root 3 into square of the side divided by 4. What is the altitude of an equilateral triangle? Root 3 into side divided by 2. There is something called an in radius and a circum radius. Similarly, there is something called an in circle and a circum circle. Now if we take any triangle, now there is a circle which is possible within the triangle. Now within the triangle, it means that the circle which is touching all the three sides of a triangle touching and not crossing which means that it only meets at one point. So such a circle which is inside the triangle is called an in circle and there is another type of circle which touches the vertex of a triangle all the three vertex. Now that is called a circum circle because it is circumferencing the entire triangle. So there is something called as in circle, circum circle. The radius of the in circle is called the in radius and the radius of the circum circle is called the circum radius. Let us look at in radius. Now the in radius of an equilateral triangle is nothing but h upon 3 which is the height upon 3 which is nothing but side divided by 2 root 3. Similarly circum radius is nothing but 2 h upon 3 which is nothing but a upon root 3. Now the area of an in circle is pi a square upon 12 and the area of a circum circle is pi a square upon 3. Let us look at the other properties. There is something called a median, there is something called a centroid. Let us assume a triangle PQR. Now P gives a median of PG which bisects the side Q and R. Now median is some a line from a vertex which divides the other side into two equal halves. So PG is one such median, QF is another such medium and RE is another such median. So the point at which all the three medians meet is called the centroid. Let us look at another thing. There is something called altitude and orthocenter. Now what is an altitude? The height as we said when we calculate this area of the triangle is nothing but the perpendicular from one vertex to the opposite side. So such a perpendicular is also called the attitude, altitude. 
So altitude of say in this triangle ABC, B gives an altitude of BD on AC. Similarly, A gives an altitude of AF on BC and CE on AB. So these are the three altitudes. The, the point at which the three altitudes meet is also called the orthocenter. Let's look at a problem. If the perimeter of a triangle is 14 and the sides are all integers, then how many different triangles are possible? Let's take a basic rule. Three sides of a triangle. Two sides have to be more than the third side. Let's de decipher it more. Now 14 is the total sum of the three sides. Now if the sum of two sides is less than 7, then the third side which is has to be more than 7. So the sum of the first two sides has to be greater than half of the entire perimeter. So any two sides totaling should be more than 7, cannot be equal to 7. Let's suppose it's equal to 7, 2 plus 5 and the third one is 7. So 2 and 5 together will form a straight line which will be equal to the third line. So this will not form a triangle. Hence the two sides have to be more than the third side. So any two sides has to be more than 7. So what are the possible combinations? So one is 2, 6, so the third side becomes 6. Another is 3, 5, so the third side becomes 6 again. Another is 6, 4, so the third side becomes 4. One, another one is 5, 5, so the third side becomes 4. So there are four total possible combinations in this answer. Let's take another example. AB is perpendicular to BC and BD is perpendicular to AC and CE bisects the angle C. So, and given that angle A is 30 degrees, what is angle CED? Let's look at the diagram. There is a triangle ABC which is a 90 degree triangle because AB is perpendicular to BC. So angle C is nothing but 180 minus 90 minus 30 degrees. 30 why? Because it is angle A. So angle C becomes 60 degrees. Now if you see CE is the angle bisector. So both sides will become equal which is 30 degrees and 30 degrees. So angle DCE will be 30 degrees. So what will be angle CED? Now BD again is perpendicular to AC. So that angle is 90 degrees. So in the triangle DCE, the total should be 180. The angle D is 90 degrees. Angle C of that smaller triangle is 30 degrees. So the third side becomes 60 degrees. Let's take another example. In the given diagram, side BC and side AB of a triangle ABC are produced to D and F respectively. If X plus Y is greater than or equal to 210 degrees, then Z is greater than how much? Now x plus y is greater than 210 degrees. If you look at x plus y, both of them along with internal angle B and angle C should be equal to 360 degrees. So if these two are greater than 210 degrees, the internal angles B and C will be less than 150 degrees. So if that is less than 150 degrees, then angle Z will be what? They will total up to 180. So that will be more than 30 degrees. Hence we get the answer that angle Z is more than 30 degrees. These were the basic properties of triangle. We shall apply the same to find out many more different things in the sessions that follow.